Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to the Greater Christ Temple Adult Sunday School class. And we're just thankful for an opportunity to come and, and gather and uh, learn more about the Lord and his ways and his will for our life. Thank the Lord for those that are coming in and those that will yet come in, as well as those that will view the replay. And so we're going to go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. Father, you are an awesome God. You're a wonderful God. We thank you for you being the word. And we thank you, Lord, that we can ingest the word that it will make a difference in our lives. Bless those that are on the line tonight. Minister to every need. Those that will watch the replay, do likewise for them. We ask that you touch our pastor, continue to strengthen him and the first family. And Father, touch our superintendent, Dr. Crook, and her family, and all those that are in bereavement and all those that need comforting right now for whatever situation they may be in. Help us to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Help us to know that it's in you that we live and move and have our being. Yes. So Father, we ask that you continue to give us what we need you, that we will come into the full statue of the Son of God. And we decree it done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, praise God, everyone. Tonight, our lesson is Kingdom Values, Kingdom Values. And we're, of course, in our page 196 uh, in the book, God's Word for Life. And we're talking about Kingdom Values tonight. Our lesson is coming, the lesson text is Mark 10, 17 through 31. Mark 10, 17 through 31. And that's a lot of read. We won't just read through, but we'll go through little by little. We did kind of discuss it a, a little bit last week. It's kind of like coming from the same uh, context uh, in, re in reference to even our last week's lesson, because our last week's lesson was taught by Brother Gary Smith, which did an awesome job. It talks about who belongs. So what we're going to start off with uh, in reference to that, we're going to talk about the kingdom agenda first. We're going to talk about kingdom values and the kingdom agenda, and then we'll get into our lesson. First, I want to define value. I want to define the word value. And of course, it means the regard, which is the noun part of it, the regard that something is held to deserve the importance, worth, or usefulness of something. Your support is of great value. It's kind of like an example that they give here. And then, of course, it's a person's principles or standards of behavior, one's judgment of what is important in life. We see in the rich young ruler, which we'll be talking about that again this week, uh, it, it basically dealt with his principles, standards, and his behavior. Uh, as well as what was important in his life. His importance in his life was basically the riches more so than the kingdom lifestyle. And then, of course, the verb of value is estimate the monetary worth of something. His estate was valued at 45000 kind of like an example there. Also, to consider someone or something to be important or beneficial, have a high opinion of. And so we have to think about it as we're in the kingdom of God, that we know that we are uh, people of value and people of worth, as well as in the kingdom and, and us being kingdom citizens, we are valuable as well. And so the values that we also have is heaven, because if we are in the kingdom of God, then our ultimate goal is to obtain heaven and eternal life. So in thinking about the kingdom, um, the kingdom of God and, uh, is basically the kingdom of God and his agenda for our lives, basically what the whole Bible is about. People live segmented, compartmentalized lives because they like a kingdom world view. The families disintegrate because they exist for their own fulfillment rather than for the kingdom. We see that example again in the rich young ruler. Churches are having a limited impact on social because on, on society because they fail to understand that the goal of the church is not the church itself, but the kingdom. We're still talking about kingdom values. And because this is so, society at large is 
to turn to find solid solutions to the perplexing changes that confront us today. Troubling problems such as crime and racism and poverty and a myriad of other uh, ills that we're going through. So it's time for us Christians to set forth a kingdom agenda. So we know that the kingdom agenda transcends the, the politics of men and offers and so the solutions of heaven. Therefore, we should be passionate about pursuing God's agenda for life and bring our lives under his rule. You know, there's a kingdom and we know there is a ruler of that kingdom. And so we know that God is what? He is the ruler of that kingdom, which is the kingdom of God in which we're in. But we have to uh, respect him as the ruler, but we have to also know how valuable we are to being in the kingdom of God because we're helping him to put forth his kingdom assignments in the earth. So we got to know who we are and whose we are and, and value that. And uh, let's see, let me go. And I just want to bring out a couple more points in reference to the kingdom. We know that there's the necessity uh, the kingdom agenda is necessary to know their covenants of the kingdom agenda, their governments of the kingdom of God. There's the authority of the kingdom of God. And so we know that we have a personal relationship with Jesus and we have to value that personal relationship. Because if we don't value the person relationship, then we won't value our lives or anything else. We'll put value on anything else besides our relationship. And this was one of the problems with the rich young ruler. Uh, uh, he had an opportunity to serve God and come into the kingdom of God, but he chose his riches instead. And so we hope that we uh, think about the kingdom and how valuable it is and how valuable we are to the kingdom of God and, and how valuable his rulership is in our lives. It's a relationship that we really need to think about, especially during this time. How strong is our relationship with God and how valuable is that relationship with God? So let's read a little bit here. I think we're starting at Mark, the 10th chapter, uh, verses 17 through 31. I will read um, Mark 10, 21 and 22. And it says, um, then Jesus beholding him, loved him and said unto him, one thing thou likest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions. So he valued his possessions more than he valued the kingdom of heaven. I mean, what more value, what more, what greater thing can you obtain than the kingdom of heaven and, and being in the kingdom of God? You know, we may not, we don't have, uh, you know, can't really see, we've heard about heaven, heard about eternal life, and that's what we're striving for is eternal life. But we, you know, we know because we have a revelation of it. We've been born again, baptized in Jesus' name for the Holy Ghost. We back, we value our salvation. So being kingdom citizens, then we have to value our salvation. So we have to be careful that we don't uh, uh, attach ourselves to idolatry, but mainly hold on to the things of God. Because if we get into idolatry, then we'll start valuing other things more so that we value the kingdom of God in our relationship with Jesus. So let's start reading in Mark 10, 17 and 30. Mark 10, verses 17 through 31. So I'm going to ask different ones to read. Um, let's see, sister, let me see who's online here. Okay, uh, let's see. Sister Cora Brown, are you at a place where you can read tonight? No, ma'am. 
I'm and sorry. I, no, that's fine. That's why I asked. That's fine. That's fine, Sister Bess. I'll get a place that you can read tonight. It's Mark 10. We'll have you read verses 17 through 21. Okay. Okay. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandment, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus beholding him loved him and said unto him, one thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and mm -hmm. come, pick up the cross, and follow me. Okay, thank you. And so see, as we go back through this again, we're dealing with the rich young ruler and uh, the values that it seemed like he had. And it seemed like he had values about his lifestyle because in verse 19, he's, uh, he said, thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witnesses, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. But he answered him and said unto him, master, all these things have I observed from thy youth. So he had observed that lifestyle that his parents had taught him and, 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 and even the things of the law, he observed those things, but it was something about him giving up his riches. He valued, it seemed like he valued uh, his, his, his uh, foundation in life, you know, because a lot of times we value our foundation. We've been to church, uh, grew up in the church, we, we attended Sunday school. It was in church with our parents. I mean, we valued those things, but something about that to grow up. And then we uh, end up you know, being able to go our own way and to obtain some things ourselves. Then sometimes we kind of get off kilter in what we value more, more so than what we need to value in reference to the kingdom of God, because we, we're thinking about being kingdom citizens. So we're in the kingdom of God. He asked him, did you want eternal life? Inviting him to come in and to obtain eternal life through coming into the kingdom. But then even though he had all of these things that he, had, he valued, the law and even honoring his mother and father, he still didn't have the mindset to even come in to a better way of life and to value that the kingdom of God was better than what he already had. Did anybody want to add anything to that? I do. <laughs> okay. Sister so ahead. Yeah. I was thinking about what you had said, um, as well as some of these musicians that were apostolic as well as Baptist, Methodist, raised up in the church, and how they got involved in the sec secular, you know, get worldly music, mm -hmm. and uh, they're so caught up, they probably don't want to go back, or um, even their parents raised them up the church, and they just got away. Mm hmm And then, but the thing is, we have to also look at what drew them away. What, what, what do you know? Can you kind of speak to us some things you think that may have drawn them away? Well, oh, the money, the fame, the fortune. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's just, uh, I remember a sister Golder told me when she was living, uh, before when I first got saved, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, something about the light that just caught their attention of the flashlight or just 
uh, caught their attention and it looked glamorous to them. And they just got caught up in that. Mm-hmm. It's more, it's more, if I'm not mistaken, the money, they make more money singing worldly songs than um, songs for the Lord. Daddy Peoples, she had the opportunity to uh, change, but she said no, she stayed with uh, religious singing, Daddy Peoples. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Daddy Peoples used to sing in the clubs, but she did change over. And I think a lot of her dress attire came from that, that arena, the club. Uh, but she just kept that same glitter and glam and just still wore it, but she wore it to perform gospel music. Uh, I think another thing that the scripture says, we're drawn away by our own lust. So even though some people are drawn away to other churches to play for them, because that's like a salary for them, but even in that, they have to be careful because they'll be drawn here, there, and everywhere. And the next thing you know, they're not even being faithful to the church to continue to stay grounded. They're around churches, but not grounded foundationally to one location and to one pastor. And that that can be a dangerous thing too, because then they'll be pulled away. And next thing you know, there's opportunities that will come and you will be playing for secular uh, artists as well but you're drawn away by your own lust. And so that lust could be even more money. They may have a regular job, but they still need more money or they have a way of expressing themselves through gifts, you know, and talents in other places and, but they're getting paid for it too. So, but then I think there comes a time where they have to choose. Now I'm really missing out on being on my foundation because I'm all I'm doing is going to choir rehearsals and, and and band rehearsals and then performing, but it takes away from the time that I have for Bible study or Sunday school. So they have to really value, you know, see what what you know what is it the way their their odds uh, with their op- opportunities. Is it really a good opportunity, or is it something just that I really want to do? And is it an opportunity that will uh, add to my spirituality? and to continue to build me up spiritually or take away from it. Those good points that you brought out. Anybody else have something to add to that? Okay, well, we'll have somebody read. I did have my hand raised. You did? Not my okay. hand was raised. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. Um, I was thinking when you said about the ruler. Mm-hmm. Did he really understand? I'm I'm thinking, I don't think he just really didn't understand mm-hmm. what was told him. He just maybe I didn't get it because mm-hmm. he did have a lot of things, a lot of things going for him. And this I think he got it confused when he's they were he was told if you did this, you could enter the kingdom of heaven. I don't think he understood the how big that was. So mm-hmm. that's why he was so easy to say, you know, he just walked away and didn't want to do it mm-hmm. because I really don't think he understood. So d- do you feel like he was, uh, had a good understanding and he was a clear or he just really just didn't want to do what God or uh, Jesus had suggested? Uh, well, like I said, in, in verse 22, it says, and he was sad at that saying and went away grief for he had great possessions. Uh, he may, he may or may not have understood because you know how Jesus talked and and the way he explained things was really through revelation. I think it was more of the opportunity to come into the kingdom, what he valued more. Because I think this lesson is dealing with kingdom values, and it was really a lesson to him: what did he value more, to come and be in the kingdom, or did he value his possessions more? Whether he really understood it or not, it's like okay. This is better for me, what you're saying. It didn't say that he even asked him uh, to explain it or any of that, because he did talk about his values as far as the law, talked about uh, keeping the law and then how he honored his mother and father. But 
uh, and he answered and said unto him, Master, all these things I've observed from thy youth. So yeah, he, he, he felt like he was, he had done good. He had done good things. And, and that's the way it is with a lot of people. They feel that they're morally good. You know, they, they really, I've got good morals. I, I don't bother anybody. I have great behavior, but you still are not saved. Your sins still remain, regardless of how great you are, how morally great you are, and even your possessions. But I think the Lord was really trying to get him to see as well as what he valued and even really that basically was becoming an idol to him. He was rich, you know, and it, sometimes they can idol, uh, idolize their, 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 their possessions and, and all of these things. In order to follow, follow God, follow the Lord, you have to humble yourself and submit yourself totally unto him. Uh, and I think about the, the fishermen, you know, and the disciples, how he went to them and they dropped everything. Some of them, they, they had a lot of value. They had businesses. They was not like they were sitting around broke. They had businesses. They were wealthy. Some of them had wealth and things. But because he asked, they dropped everything they had and came and followed him. And so it was the same thing with him. It was like, so I'm asking you, will you put those things away and come and follow me? I think it was a matter of a choice, what you valued more. And so I hope I answered your question. Maybe, maybe, or maybe not. Maybe somebody else can add on to that. That's a good point, uh, Sister Corey. Dr. Crook, I think you had something you was wanting to say. I was trying to unmute, thank you. And I was kind of on the same page with you, uh, Evangelist Morrison, is the picking and choosing what part of what he wanted to do that may have, that, that he was uh, willing to give up. And I think the message kind of is, what are we willing to give up for the Lord? And that we cannot choose that piece of the Bible that fits us or sounds good to us. And then I think even with him, because he said he studied, obviously he had studied the law because he said, I've done all these, I kept all these commandments and whatever. But, but did he really, really want to choose the Lord his way? Jesus way mm -hmm. over how he felt like he wanted to do because sometimes we think because I'm doing all this stuff in the church and I'm doing this, that, whatever and it's all well and good but is that all that God is requiring and then he's God is trying to see the Lord Jesus trying to see and all of them the same we know that but he was just trying to see to me it was where your heart is and I think that that's what he's trying to ask us Mm -hmm. You ask me to come and clean all the toilets and whatever I can do that. If you ask me to 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 teach all the classes, I can do that. If you ask me to give a certain amount of money, maybe I can do that. But if you're asking me to do something that's near and dear to my heart that I have value more than the Lord, which could be anything, it's happening with to be money, mm -hmm. then are you really sold out for the Lord? I, I, that's kind of what I was kind of getting at. Okay. Brother Gary, I see your hand. Yes, I'm I'm kind of in concert with all y'all uh, about the dedication. I think that uh, when he first came, Jesus called Jesus good good teacher, you know, and Jesus said, nobody good but God. And really, he was wanting the man to think about good, you know, and I'm pretty sure in, in, in itself before Jesus said that, you know, uh, he probably thought he was good. And, you know, he was doing a work-based you know, try to be saved, this and that. But think about it is, you know, God checks the heart. God always puts you in situations where you got to choose. And think about it is, he didn't, he didn't want to choose. He 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 trusts in his riches more than more than he trusted in God. See, mm -hmm. God's gonna put us to the test to see where our heart at. You know, see if we love Him. And and the Bible, you know, the first commandment, He wasn't willing to do the first commandment: love God all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all in the strength. And mm -hmm. see, that's the thing about it is, you know, if you can't keep that first commandment, you ain't gonna be able to keep the rest of them. That's true. That's true. It's a good point. These are good points. Thank you all for sharing. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead on to um, verses 22 through 20, uh, 22 through 26. 
if somebody could read that. Verses 22 through verse 26. We in Mark the 10th chapter, now with verses 22 through 26. Someone I can read it. Okay. And he was sad at the saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked round about and said unto his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches entered into the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure saying among themselves, who then can be saved? Mm -hmm. Okay. And they were astonished out of measure saying among themselves, who then can be saved? And we all know what the eye of the needle is. Can someone... Do y'all remember what the eye of the needle is? Well, it's an opening that a camel goes through and he has to kind of bend down to get mm -hmm. in. It's not talking about that little bit of needle that we saw with. Right. It was a place in Jerusalem where they would come through. And because it was so small, the camels could not get through. So they had to bow down and kind of go uh, up under the the opening so that they would get through to the other side. I just want to make sure people knew what the eye of the needle was. Okay. So I'm going to read on. And Jesus looking upon them said, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Then Peter began to say unto him, lo, we have left up all and have followed thee. Remember I was talking about the disciples. They left all to follow him. And Jesus answered and said, Barely I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house, our brethren, our sisters, our father, our mother, our wife, our children, our lands for many, for my sake, and the gospels. But he shall receive an hundred, uh, hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren and uh, sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal uh to come eternal life but many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first so we show that even peter was talking about value as well he said i did it in other words the rich young ruler didn't do it but they did it so in other words the rich young ruler didn't have any excuse because it was already an example there that they had did that I do want to go to the point where it says Jesus called to radical selflessness. I'm going to kind of look at that a little bit. I'm on page 201. Jesus did not ask the rich young ruler to do something he, he himself was unwilling to do. Indeed, Jesus had already laid aside the glory of heaven, which was worth far more than everything the young man owned and embraced the suffering of earth. Paul explained this sacrifice in greater detail in Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Jesus made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. There is the word, humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Jesus willingly surrendered his life so he might have eternal life. Now, the call to follow Jesus is a call to radical selflessness. Can somebody talk about, uh, let's talk about what it is to be, uh, as far as selflessness. Can somebody uh, expound on that? What you think selflessness is? Selflessness. Well, when you talk about selflessness, you talk about willing to give up everything, give it, even give it your life if need to be, you know, 
mm -hmm. and, and putting God first, you know, and just like Jesus Christ, he always put God first and, you know, your, your dreams, your hope and putting everything, putting God in the center of everything. And that's mm -hmm. making him the Lord of all, you know, that's, that's, that's a radical unselfishness right there. Mm -hmm. That is, that's radical selflessness. Thank you. It is a call to put others first, to seek God's kingdom above all else, even if it means abandoning what we previously held dear. And so that's what the rich young ruler really uh, was basically should have done. He should have done, but he didn't, couldn't see it. And I really believe just getting back to what Sister Cora was saying, maybe he did not totally see it, but I believe if he had said, uh, he 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 submitted to it, or he said yes to it. I believe little by little he would have had a revelation. I believe God would have revealed it to him. You know, a lot of people come into Christ don't totally understand everything about the kingdom of God, and salvation, and 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 um, you know the ordinances and things in the Bible. You know the words in the Bible, but as they submit themselves and humble themselves then they have more understanding about the kingdom, understanding about God, understand about his word, understand about the lifestyle of a kingdom citizen, understand that lifestyle as they go. Now there's the danger of trust in riches and our need of the spirit. As the rich young rulers sought the way, Jesus turned his disciples and shocked them with his next statement. How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God to drive home the point he repeated himself. Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? And then he dealt with the, you know, going through the eye of the needle and all of that. And the disciples were astonished by Jesus' word and in their minds, wealth and power were sure signs of God's favor and blessings. If someone like the rich young ruler, a wealthy man who faithfully kept the law of Moses, could not earn heaven, what hope did those poor Galilean fishermen have? Jesus quickly assured them, with God, all things are possible. We know God can save sinners from the drug addiction, alcoholism, and moral lifestyles, but he can also save sinners who are ensnared by financial abundance and material wealth. There again is what they value. And instead of putting the value on their, their life eternal, they put value on a monetary gain. But ask the question, uh, in what ways can material wealth blind us to our need for God? Uh, is it really wrong to have material wealth? Somebody answered that. Is it wrong to have? material wealth? Is it wrong to be wealthy? Praise the Lord. It's not wrong. It's, not, it's how you look at it and how it looks at you or how it handles you. Um, we were just having this discussion. I'm sorry that I'm late, but oh, yeah. uh, we were having this discussion about this rich uh, ruler that had to give up everything. And uh, I told my wife, don't judge him because if we were told to give up our houses, uh, we may have a second uh, 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 look at things ourselves. Uh, we were talking about Ananias and Sapphira. They sold their house. That was not the problem. They were trying to show off in front of God's people. They said, you didn't lie to God. You, you could have fooled us, but you lying to God now. Right. And they died. Yes. And so we had to uh, be careful not to put on the show for people, but be sincere uh, with God. That's a good point right there. That's a good yeah. point. Well, one of the things, this is Cora, uh -huh. one of the things uh -huh. you, you asked was, can you have riches or, or whatever you say it uh, and, and still be saved? I don't think the riches has as much to do with it is how you feel about it. I mean, you could have a, uh, all kind of abundance of wealth, but you're still spiritual. Right. There are some people who don't have a token and they're not spiritual, so they don't have, it just depends on the individual and how you feel. So no, ma'am, I don't feel like 
you should be dirt poor and you know and just don't have a token in order to get saved be, to be saved i think god wants us to have nice stuff i don't think god wants us to live like ragamuffins so i'm i'm just thinking but he also wants us to give reverence to to him so you have to balance it you got to know uh because a lot of people say well the reason we don't we don't have things because it keeps us praying well not necessarily so so i mean it may maybe for you maybe it's necessary that particular individual maybe it is you can't have nothing because you won't do right but mm -hmm. i'm just saying but for, for god he wants us to live nice lives and have nice things don't want us to be struggling and living like i said and some people do have poverty but i still feel like it's how you look at it you you, you can be saved with material things you can be saved um without material things it's just the way your heart is set and that's that's how i look at it so it's yes ma'am I, I do feel like you can get help things mm -hmm. nice stuff and still god you can still be saved amen both of those uh answers was really good y'all brought up some good points because really it's all about wisdom and how you uh, steward what you have, you know, and then as you steward what you have, a lot of times you're giving as well, you know, of your will and helping other people and blessing other people, not necessarily just hoarding it to yourself, but also being a blessing, you know, with your will. And then that pleases God because you're giving of your substance to others as well. That's a real good point. Thank you. All. Thank you both for it those comments they were good uh, so there, is, there, is a, there is a cult where they're supposed to uh there I, I would just say there are some churches that teach that we're not to have wealth of that type of thing that those are worldly possessions anything that you obtain and you got all this wealth is worldliness and then it keeps you from God. like you said they it keeps you from praying keep you from fasting they were under erroneous doctrine, erroneous teaching. And there are some occults that are teaching that, that, it's, it, that in order to be uh, saved, truly saved that we're supposed to be poor in spirit. And they, they've got it, they, you know, talking about the blessed are the poor in spirit for they just God, but they, they got that wrong. They took it out of context and they started teaching that they have to be poor uh, and that, that their poorness uh, is, is a way really serving God and, and pleasing God because we're so humble and we're just humble and we would give everything. We don't want to have wealth. The main thing we want to have is God. And then we will eventually have eternal life. And that's where our riches come when we go to heaven. But God wants us to be blessed even in this time. And this time, I just, I kind of had to bring that out because that's why I was asking that question, because there are some cults, you know, that teach that, that teach that you don't need to have well. I have a lot of hands uh, up. I've got uh, Evangelist Lowry, Dr. Crook, I think your hand is up again. And then we have Galaxy S21. Uh, uh, Sister Linda, uh, Hannah, did you have your hand up? Was you trying to say yeah. something? Yes, yes ma'am. Miss, did you say something too? So we'll go around. We have Sister Hunter. Uh, I think Sister Bess was beginning to talk before I did. Evangelist Lowry and then the Galaxy S215 G in that order. Sister uh, Hunter. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, I would just like to say that um, uh, in being rich, if you become rich, you have to I feel like you have to ask the Lord to help you to stay humble during during all this time that you're rich and and, and because my my thing my, speaking of myself, uh, I've always like say, well, Lord, when I become rich, help me to not uh, uh, get the big head. Help me to to stay humble to you, you know, because if not, then we're gonna be in trouble. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll be in trouble, you know, because because uh, it's so easy for us to get pulled away if you're not rooted and grounded in the word, you know, in, in Jesus. And uh, so my prayer is that, Lord, when you do bless me to be wealthy, help mm -hmm. me to stay humble so that I won't uh, 
wave it to the you know left, right. Just keep my eyes, my mind, my heart focused on you. So mm-hmm. that's my prayer. So I, I believe that's going to happen way that one day because the uh, in my heart is to help people. Uh, come out of what they're in, not only just physically, it was their financially, but spiritually. That's number one, spiritually. Mm-hmm. So um, that that's that's all I have to say. That's good. That's good. And like you said, humility is the key to that whole thing in in being wealthy. Okay. Uh, I think Sister Bess, did you? Sister Bess. Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, I, uh, what came to mind to me was the scripture when God says, if you be faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many. Mm-hmm. I think that went for everything, mm-hmm. you know, not just uh, material things, but also finances and, and health and uh things that you want to do and and things so uh and what you do uh what you do for him you know so Mm -hmm. I think that when you take care of God's business he'll take care of you Mm -hmm. and it is it's like a circle it just goes around and around and when you know, like a, it can be like a snowball rolling down the hill. Mm-hmm. You know, it starts out small, but as long as you attentive to it and take care of it and shape it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So I think that uh, but, uh, material things and finances can 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 fit that, you know, that scenario as well. Mm-hmm. That's all. Okay, that's good. That's good. Evangel Slary. Oh, what I was gonna say, it's it's not so much the money, it's the love of money. Mm-hmm. It's when you, your money becomes your God. And not only money, it could be material things. You don't have to have the money, but your house or whatever you value more than God. Mm -hmm. It could be your business, whatever it is that you put above God and begin to worship it and feel like without it, you know, uh, it's going to make a big difference in my life. Mm -hmm. And I remember when one time, you know how you and brother elder or minister uh, long uh, strong was saying, you know, you brag about stuff. Well, I was remember one time I was praying (laughs) And I was saying, Lord, you know, because we were doing the little feeding, you know, at the church. And I said, I give the coat off my back to the Lord, you know. <laughs> and I remember that so well. And I was saying, Lord, you know, and he put me to the test because I, I had got a new leather coat. And I left it in the cafeteria or, you know, somewhere. And they gave it away. <laughs> and you have to think about it. And at first I was kind of like upset. And then I thought about it. I said, well. You did tell the Lord, get a coat off your back. And I said, he tried to test me, so I shouldn't get mad. I can't get mad because that's my words. Now you're going to be tested by your words. So Mm -hmm. then I had to realize, realize. you know, and I said, okay. It didn't mean that much because, you know what I'm saying? It didn't mean more than God. Mm -hmm. So when I let that thing go, the Lord blessed me with another coat, but it, 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 it helped test you on it. What 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 means more to you in life? That's true. Then what what do you put above me? Mm-hmm. Uh, and not just what you say, you know, you do, but you say. Mm-hmm. But then you might be tested in that area. Whatever you put before God, your children, your house, whatever. Mm-hmm. That's that's the point. That is so true. That's good. <laughs> that is a good example. You're right. When you put your mouth out there, you put your words out there, you're gonna be tested on your word. And especially in that situation, I mean, that was like an immediate test that came. (laughs) But it looks like you had the right, you end end up having the right attitude (laughs) in it as well. Dr. Crook? I was going to say that this was so important to the Lord uh, that in Malachi 3 and 10, where he's asking 
us to prove him. So, mm. so just helping us to understand that God's going to give you more and more anyway, but he is helping us to see what is actually in his heart. He loves us so much that he wants us to make the right decisions. And so he puts that here and he's saying, pay your tithes, bring your storehouse to the storehouse so that we know the rest of the uh, scripture. But he's mm. saying that if you don't have no money, you don't have nothing to give, then how is this ministry and the work going to go on? But whatever you give him, which is probably the same with the rich man, ru ruler, even mm -hmm. if he gave him that all, he was going to bless him more with his financial or any other means. Mm -hmm. So we can get that down in our heart. Forget about the money and the riches because the more you give away, he's going to give you more in abundance anyway. We can't even do that if we're blocking him mm -hmm. by not doing what we need to do. Right, right. And I like when you said that because, of course, in verse 30, in uh, chapter 10, it says, but he shall receive an hundredfold uh, now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. But it's like you said, he would give back to you whatever you give up, you know, uh, uh, you'll get it back. That's, that, that's the reward in that, in the sacrifice and what you give up. And I see Galaxy S2156, not sure who that is, but please go ahead and speak. You have your hand up. Okay, it's me, Sister Mirror here, praise the Lord. Um, first of all, I just want to say, well, I was going to read Psalms 62, verses 10 through 12, and it reads as follows, trust not in oppression, and become not vain and robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God mm -hmm. has spoken once, twice, have I heard this, and power belong unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belong of mercy, for thou mm -hmm. rendest to every man according to his work. So I think what he's trying to say that if your riches do increase, don't set your heart upon them. But but then he, he, ends it, he renders to every man according to his work. So it's how you... Being humble. That's what I've seen. Main thing is being humble because power belongs to God and He's able to bless you. Mm -hmm. Bless you. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to end on this. I know Sister Carol Boyd. I heard her say that she knows when she was uh, living on this face of the earth that she knew some rich apostolic people. Mm hmm. Just end it on that note. Okay. <laughs> amen. Amen. And yeah, there are quite a bit of people that are, and it's not necessarily that they flaunt it. A lot of times you don't even know. A lot of people that are very wealthy, they're so low key in their lifestyle and and, and the presentation that you wouldn't even know that you're sitting next to a, a very wealthy person because they're humble. And there are some that that flaunt it. There's some that flaunt it and some that don't. So uh, it kind of goes back to that bishop that they had on, on uh, Facebook out of New York. He uh, went around flaunting all his riches. He would go into the, uh, the, uh, the underserved communities and uh, try to do stuff for them. But a lot of it was show because he was making sure he was on Facebook Live doing it. Uh, and then he would always go out there dressed to the nines. He would have designer on from head to toe. Uh, even his car was macked out designer. I mean, he would go in the hood and those things. But he was also saying, y'all can have the same thing I've got. Look what I've got. And then even at his church, uh, the way he would dress out in his church, he would have designer um, uh, attire for his preaching outfits and all these watches and diamonds and all of these things on. And then there was one day, uh, some, I think he had been getting threats is what he said. He'd been getting threats. And one day uh, these people came in, these muggers came in and they held a gun to his wife's head and took her jewelry and then went and, uh, and I think they held a gun to him uh, in the pulpit. And, you know, and made him move or whatever. And they, I guess, knocked him down. I think it's where it looked in the video and took all his jewelry 
and everything. Then they left back out. Well, it, it, it was to the point where people was really uh, thinking that this was a real thing and 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 it, people was feeling sorry for them and and then he said y'all need to pray I'm gonna come against them and no weapon formed against me will prosper and but I'm still gonna have my stuff I still I'm still rich and he just bragging 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 and the next thing you know they uh the the police came and locked him up because he put forth them to come in there to portray that he was being held up and so he could get more insurance money. <laughs> yeah, Frank. So he could get more insurance money, but it turned around on him. He got locked up for portraying and for falsely accusing and for setting it up like that. So there was, it was like a, a show. It was deception. And he was pay, paid off the guys to come in to hold them up. Can you imagine? All this was on Facebook Live. All this was on YouTube during his church service. So it looked so horrific, but it ended up coming back around where they found out that he was only deceiving and playing a game. I mean, and it really made the church look bad. And then he ended up coming out a whole different way. His whole character changed. He was started cursing and swearing and saying all these words while he was coming back on Facebook. They locked me up. They weren't right in locking me up. This really happened. Well, they found and found out that it really was something that he did that wasn't right. But he was flaunting his riches, flaunting his riches so much to where he was, he, he pulled together a deceptive situation so he can obtain even more. Uh, the the what what did that, what is uh, evangelist uh, Larry said? The love of money, the love of money will have you going crazy, doing some crazy things. There's no way you're gonna be in a church service and you're gonna have it on YouTube and Facebook Live, and you're gonna come on there. You, you be cracking. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm good. I'm laughing so hard. I'm that like, you okay, got, just a moment. That you don't get robbed. <laughs> but can you imagine the people in the church and how they felt and how it affected them to see this oh. horrific thing happen? Because he and he even said they people are so scared to come to church. They won't come to church, but no weapon formed against me will prosper. <laughs> I'm like, what? And we was just like, did you see that? And we were just praying, oh Jesus, praying for his wife. <laughs> and all that. And this, and this was live. I mean, this him was being live. this was like, live. what about the arrest? Did it, was that live? Did he what? The, what now? the arrest, yeah. Did it was arrested. It's on Facebook. <laughs> I tell you, I they sure did. They locked him up. He was in jail and he still was saying that that was a lie. Now, I think the guys that he had uh, a portraying that they was coming in to, to, uh, to, um, to, to gang them and to, to rob them, end up telling on him, end up telling, they had to end up telling the truth because they took them down too for robbery. So I guess you take a, uh, you're going to pay too, man. It ain't going to be like that. I'm not going down by myself. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not going down by myself. You know what, Sister Morrison? It makes me think about just the opposite of, okay, how I bishop, think about him. Nobody, he don't act like a bishop. What I'm saying is the people who are bishops, they got entourage, somebody told me bags, two or three men working with, blah, blah, blah. Bishop Merritt, he driving what that, what what he drive? They ain't no fancy, fancy nothing. He drives a regular, sometimes that truck, that <laughs> that old uh, 67 car he had that he used to have when he was in his 20s. He drive that thing. Y'all been in his house. You seen that y'all. They got cars and all kind of stuff out there. But anyway, he drives, I'm just oh, saying, <laughs> he is not walking around in the hotels at the convention with, uh, with two men behind him toting his bags and his stuff. And I think he's been Somebody has mentioned to him that man, you don't act like a you know a bishop, mm -hmm. but he that's not his person. He don't do that kind of stuff. That's not his thing. 
No. Which to me, when you were talking about humility, that's to me, that that's a good no. form of humility no. in my mind. No. And I'm not just saying it because he's my bishop and he's my relative, because uh -huh. I've been doing <laughs> this man forever all, all our lives. But no. the point is, he's always been this kind of person, but even now with all his position, you don't see him doing it. So I was saying humility when you start, I made me think about how he's carrying himself and how people criticize him because he ain't acting like no bishop. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be walking around with all kind of stuff going on and acting like you better than everybody else. And yeah. that's not where he is. So for that, I was talking about that's the contrast. You're saying uh -huh. one is. did, this man was doing all this being glorified. Uh -huh. We got another man who's with humility who's kind of being criticized because he ain't doing all that. Right. So just kind of like, it just depends on the individual. Like you said, the love of not only money, prestige, prestige. recognition, Who all I that am. stuff. Yes. To pay. yes. Yes, ma'am. You have to be careful because it may not be the riches. It's just, it's just fame or notoriety. You know, some people get so caught up into their notoriety. Look at me, look at who I am, you know, and that's, that's just not, not the way that we're to be. We're supposed to continue to be humble and to represent ourselves right as kingdom citizens, humble and 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 uh, as unto the Lord. Anybody have anything else they want to add? It's the end of our lesson tonight. I just thought about that. It's amazing. It's amazing how he did that. Hey, anybody else have anything they want to add or say? Yes, Mr. Morrison. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. Um, I, th I think, you know, I was just thinking about what we've been talking about, about riches and all that. And, you mm. know, the scripture came to my mind uh, that in the third book of John, John, the second verse, it says, behold, mm. I pray that you may prosper in all things. Yes. Hey, God. In yes. all, things. all things. Not just some things. Some things. Mm. Have to be poor and all this. Mm -hmm. he, he's not saying, John is not saying, God wants you poor. He said, mm -hmm. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things uh -huh. and be in health. Be in health. Be in health. Just as your soul prosper, oh, just as your mind, your will, and your emotion prosper. Hallelujah. Glory yeah. to God. That's it. That's the God we serve. That That's the God we serve. Uh -huh. that is so, you know, you don't have to walk around and, you know, say, I, I don't want to, I want to know this or whatever, whatever. No, I want you to know God. Here you go. Glory to God. I want you to know that God has prospered me. Why? Because I walked in his way and I walked in his, I'm walking in his will. Uh -huh. And I'm following the scripture. Amen. Prosper in all things. That's yes. my God. Prosper in all things all and things. be in help. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, God, the help yes. part, the help part. Uh -huh. God wants us to be in health. Mm-hmm. Just as your soul prosper, just okay. as what you're doing tonight, prosper in the soul, the mind, and the emotion. Mm -hmm. that's, good. That's, that's, that's the soul. That is good. That's the soul. Mind, your will, and your emotion. Mind, will, and emotion. Oh, I love God. I want God, people to know God is a, a loving God. He's a prosperous God. Hallelujah. And all he's asking us to do is to follow. Mm. Follow him in obedience. Follow yeah. him in his way. Don't yeah. hold everything to yourself. Give to others. Uh -huh. That's what God is asking us to do. That's it. That's my God. That's our God. So I just thank God for the comments tonight. And I just wanted to share that. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to know that we, we serve a loving God. Mm -hmm. And he wants to prosper all of us. Yes. And he wants to give us help. All of us give us help. Mm hmm even as our soul prosper. So I just thank God for the lesson tonight. It's been a wonderful teaching lesson. So I thank God for all of y'all. Amen. God bless you too. Thank God for you too. I think uh, uh, Elder Mills, did you have something you were trying to say? Uh -huh. no, I was just listening to the lesson. You hear me? Yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah. I was just listening to the sister and I didn't get a chance to catch it all. 
I was in another meeting. I apologize. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I know one of the things that stood out to me when I looked at this lesson, dealing with the rich man coming to Jesus, asking him a question, mm -hmm. uh, and how he he was in love with the idea of receiving eternal life, but never never really wanted it because how can you want something God tell you what you need to get it and you walk away from the only person who can give it to you mm -hmm. Jesus was the only person that could give him eternal life mm -hmm. he told him about the six commandments that is dealing with our relationship towards our fellow man yes and the number one commandment is love the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. You can never receive eternal life if you do not love the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. And he is talking to God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. God in the flesh tells him what he needs to do. Get rid of the possessions that are holding you back from loving me. Mm -hmm. When the rich man counted up the cost, he said, I ain't trying, I ain't willing to do that. And he, and he lifts, he bows his head down, turns his back away from God, and walks away from God. Mm -hmm. And the Bible never lets us know if he repents, if he turns back. Jesus tells us that it'll be hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God because when you totally depend on your riches and not the God that is, has, a, has, a, has all the cattle on a thousand hills, how can you depend on God if you're, going to have, if you're going to depend on your riches or your mate or your job or your knowledge? You can't depend on God depending on that. It can only be one person on the throne, and it's got to be Jesus. Mm -hmm. If Jesus is not on the throne in your life, you're going to always have a constant battle. Yeah. God wants to be on the throne. If that rich man would have surrendered and allowed God to be on the throne, mm -hmm. he would have achieved eternal life. He would have received yes. it. He would have repented. He yeah. would have got baptized. He would have started walking with God, mm -hmm. but he chose to walk away from God. And I just, I look at that. How can you walk away from the, from the giver? Mm -hmm. and expect to receive eternal life. Mm -hmm. I want to end. Thank you for sharing that. That was good. I really appreciate every comment, every, um, you know, you sharing your thoughts and everything on this. And we're going to end this lesson uh, in Matthew's, the uh, 16th chapter, verses one through... verses 21 through 26. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him saying, but be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man, for what is a man profit? if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That's a thought right there that we need to all keep in mind. What is it that shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You always have to think about your soul, value your soul, value your, uh, your relationship with God, value being a kingdom citizen, value uh, the Lord being the Lord of your life and him ruling over your life, value the kingdom principles, everything dealing with the kingdom, you have to value it, value it because you don't want to, uh, to uh, 
try to profit in other areas and lose your soul, meaning you're not valuing uh, the, the relationship. You value other things beside of the relationship. And we're not talking about riches or anything like that. I'm just talking about your priorities, your priorities yeah. at this point. Uh, so we asked Dr. Crick if she has any, uh, any announcements. Uh, yes, just remember to uh, uh, register for the ICA Council, which is going to be March the 14th through the 18th at week, and then also register for Region 5, which is in the month of April. We are still in the process of trying to complete the arrangements for getting a bus so that we can travel to Chicago for the Region 5 convention. The convention is going to be here in Nashville, it's going to be here in either Nashville, Kentucky, or Alabama, but the, our council will be hosting it this year. So it would be good for everyone possible who can go to go in 10 so that we can be in support of our superintendent, who is uh, Minister Janet Carter. Um, and so that's kind of what we want to do. And then just invite others to Sunday school. It is growing in person on Sunday mornings, and we thank God for, for that. And then just as the Thursday night, we have different rotating teachers, and I thank God for all the teachers who are here supporting one another. And I just ask you all to continue to pray that the Lord bless all of us and that Sunday school, we're doing what we need to do to make sure we are helping to get people into his kingdom through the Sunday school ministry. Thank you. Amen. 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 Sister, uh, Sister Booker, could you close us out in prayer? Who did you say? Yeah, Sister Booker. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. Father God, I just thank you tonight, Lord, for your love, your kindness, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, I thank you for your word tonight, Lord, mm, that comes in, hallelujah, that comes in and enrich us, Lord, in every way, Lord, our mind, our will, and our emotions, Lord. Father God, I just thank you for Ah, oh, Evangelist Morrison, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the work that she's doing, Lord. Father God, I ask you to increase her, strengthen her, Lord. Strengthen her. God, Jesus, let her know that you love her, Lord. Oh, God, and you approve of your people, Lord, that are working for you. Lord, we need approval. Oh, glory to God. Approve her, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Help her to love you the more, Lord. Help her to love your people. God, we thank you for our pastor and his wife tonight, Lord, wherever they are. Hallelujah. I ask you right now to touch, God. Touch their minds and their hearts right now, Lord. Father God, let them know that they're not alone, that you're with them, Lord, wherever they are, Lord. So you'll never leave us, neither will you forsake us. Even a God. Mm, mm, mm. Even to the end of the world, Lord, you will be with us. God, we thank you that we're so secure in you. We're secure in you. God, I ask you to bless those that have not, Lord. In the name of Jesus, bless your people everywhere, Lord. Help us to be obedient to you, Lord. Obedient to your word, Lord. Father God, I just thank you tonight. I'm so glad to be saved. Thank you for all my saved brothers and sisters tonight, Lord. We, oh, we are, hallelujah, we yield to you, Lord. Yield to you, Lord. Yield to you and your way, O oh God. Oh, Father God, and we stand by, Lord, that you might bless us in every way. God, we ask you right now, thank you for the airways tonight. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for those on the airways tonight, O oh God. God, we just bless you. We glorify you, Lord. We can't wait to see you. We just love you so much, Lord. Thank you for your time. Everything is in your hand. God, we thank you and we love you. It's all in Jesus' name we, that we pray. Lord, bless everyone on the line. In Jesus' name, oh, we thank you and we praise you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you for that awesome prayer. May God continue to bless each and every one of you. Lord, it's willing to see you on soon. Uh, if not, uh, then we'll see you next Thursday. The Lord's will. God bless you all. Amen. Amen.